it's just so special for uh, such our club. Our club, mate. Our club. Lastly, after 57 years of pain, it's coming home. Hey there, TJ here, and welcome to Yeah The Ds, where I am going through our Round 17 loss against the Geelong Cats down at GMHBA BCD EFG Stadium. 28-point loss, so pretty much five goals, but it was three goals and ten points. Could have been a bigger margin, could have almost gone our way if things happened to go our way. Getting within five points halfway through the last quarter was a bit of a surprise considering how well Geelong played. Geelong played... One of the better games I've seen them play. And the effort that the Ds put in was really good. Like our, our, our boys tried real hard and they almost pulled it out. But unfortunately Geelong were just a little bit too clean and uh, kicked those last three goals towards the end of the game. We had a really good team going into this game. So let's have a quick look at it. On paper, I thought this was one of the best team lists that we had put out all year. The back line's really, really solid. Forward line's got some nice names in it. Uh, Christian Petrarca named forward as well, spending a bit more time down there. Max Gorn and Luke Jackson both coming back in after Gorn had a couple of games off and Luke Jackson had the had the one game against Adelaide off. Definitely not at 100%. They were definitely not at a, nowhere near 100%. Like Max Gorn didn't even take a mark and Luke Jackson didn't even touch it in the second half. They were just, they were definitely impacted. It's hard to find where the weaknesses are in our side or what changes changes do you make like personally I would really love to see Trent Rivers back in the side I think the way that he attacks the ball is something that we are possibly missing in the back line we seem to be maybe a little bit too samey as Angus Brayshaw Christian Salem and Jake Bowie are all very similar players and they're all not that fast so maybe we're a little bit out of pace in the back line. Michael Hibbert is still a bit older, but I love loving his endeavour on the ball and the way that he's going. Stephen May, Harrison Paddy and Jake Lever are all locks every week. They work so well together, even though Stephen May was getting sucked up the ground a little bit, but Tom Hawkins only kicked one goal. Harrison Petty was on Jeremy Cameron, who is probably the best informed forward in the comp at the moment and kept him goalless, so... Another great game from Harrison Petty. It's, uh, he took the tickets on that one. Anyway, I'm going to change up this review for a little bit. So I'm just going to talk about the game in general rather than going through each quarter. So let me know if you prefer this style in the comments below. Game started off pretty well. Bailey Fritch got the first goal on the board and Christian Petrarca followed up shortly after that. Bebe has... Kicked a goal in every game so far this year, and only uh, Chol from the Gold Coast has done the same. <sighs> Super high pressure quarter this first one. It was, it was really good in attacking. Lots of interesting tactics from Geelong, especially through Reece Stanley and Mark Blizzcavs. Blizzcavs was playing in the middle more like a midfielder, and then taking some of the ruck. And Reece Stanley was playing kind of like how Max Gorn used to play, with rolling down into the back line and and trying to take an opponent or or allow for someone else to come off. I felt like our, our endeavour on the ball, our attack on the ball was all pretty good in the first quarter. It just, it pretty much broke even. Geelong only ending up two points up. I noticed Wayne Carey was talking about us not breaking tackles in that quarter, but we broke five. And there was only one holding the ball from memory. I have zero issues with our players taking taking on the tackler and trying to break through and get the handball off. Like, if we're breaking through five and we're getting caught on one, then I have zero fuss over that. I want the players to take the game on. One of the main reasons Geelong won this game is because they took the game on and they were doing things I'd, I hadn't seen before. There was this one moment, I'm pretty sure it was in the second quarter, it might have been in the third, where they got the ball towards the back of the centre square and usually they would kick sideways or take time on the mark. Instead, he played on and kicked it to the front half of the centre square, and they were able to get a goal straight after it, and that's where I was like, oof, this is a different Geelong, because they're taking the game on, they're taking riskier kicks, but they still have that elite kicking that they've always had. So when those kicks come off, they're extra dangerous, and there was quite a few extra chances that they had in this game because they were playing so differently. We didn't really adjust to it. We just kind of played our game. I was noticing that Simon Goodwin afterwards wasn't really too fussed about losing this. It seems like he didn't want to reveal his cards or or show too much. So I'd be really interested to see what happens when we play them in finals. I, I think it's a very high chance. 
that we will. And it, it will be another cracking game. We match up really well against them. They match up really well against us. But I thought the, for, the first half was pretty good. Christian Petrarca really getting plenty of the ball and kicking goals, which has been fantastic. I He hadn't been getting them quite on the board yet. And that was a big criticism I had about him in the last couple of years is that I, I used to have... Marcus Bontempelli ahead of him as a better player in the competition because he would hurt you on the scoreboard. And Christian Petrarca has really started to do that the last two weeks. You know, three goals in each game is a great return. And before that, I think he had kicked like 9.21 or or something ridiculous. The pressure was there and at the level in the first half, I think it was pretty even. The Cats had four more scoring shots. Um, Some of those could have been goals. We probably could have been a bit behind, but... That only really opened up in the third quarter. The third quarter was uh, was really, in my opinion, the only bad quarter that we really had. They just beat us in the contest way too easily, and were able to to get it out out way too easily as well. We were just we were behind all the time, and the, I think the main difference came down to it was how clean we were when under pressure. And Geelong were winning in the midfield. They were giving their teammates first opportunity to the ball. And by constantly beating us in the contest, I think they had at one stage in this quarter 11 inside 50s in a row, which is really ridiculous control, especially against such a good contested ball unit like we are. Pressure in the middle, they smashed us in clearances, which gives them a better field position because they're backing themselves to keep the momentum going and have the win. So where we should have been setting up a little bit more defensively, but we were still setting up to try and win the ball out and expecting a healthy Gorn or a healthy Jackson sort of impact. And we didn't get that. We didn't get the normal impact that they had, not even close. So by beating us at clearances, they beat us at our own game. And that's clearances, forward pressure, pressure around the ball, and then intercepting. They did a really good job intercepting. And when we aren't controlling the footy and being pressured our inside 50s look worse than what they are because the connections aren't there the ball's being rushed and it's being kicked to a spot where a loose Geelong player has been able to go and grab it in our wins we get way more contested footy than what we did in that game against Geelong which in turn controls the tempo of the game and then we lock it inside 50 which we did on some occasions we did on some occasions where where we did lock it inside 50 And the main reason for locking it inside 50 is A, to try and score a goal, and B, also waste a lot of time and waste a lot of game time while it's down there. Because if the ball's in our forward 50, it's not in theirs. And time's just ticking off the clock. So there's a bit of that, a bit of time taking off the clock, which we try to do, and we try to choke up the ground defensively from that. But when you're getting beaten in the contest and the players are running out, that's a lot harder to choke the ground up. Geelong taking the game on playing on a lot more than what they usually do and they threw a lot at us so despite all of our stars in the midfield they won the contested possession by 18 Tommy Atkins just had had an absolute field day he had what nine clearances 10 possessions and a goal and it's just that's a great game that's usually the stats we'll get from a Clayton Oliver it was good that Neil Bourne and Toby Bedford were able to get on the scoreboard in back-to-back goals in that quarter but that was only our real highlight there uh fourth quarter they just seemed a bit more on top. Clayton Oliver gets his thumb fractured by a wayward kick from Joel Selwood, which was pretty shit house. Stephen King on Jeff White is instantly came into my memory thinking about that. Christian Petrarca kicked his third goal of the game there. And that's that's the goal that brought us within seven points after Cozzy's goal. Like after everything that had happened and what had gone on throughout the game, you know, Geelong dominating the third quarter three goals four to to two goals two they should have been a lot more ahead and they weren't and we got it back down to five points just after well it was seven points with Christian Petrarca's kick when we kicked two more points after that we had a couple of small chances here if you know one of these that had gone through you know we we draw it up or or hit or hit the front then maybe this changes a little bit after here but unfortunately they bumped their pressure up a notch Geelong's pressure factor at 227 Ours was at 237, so it's not like we're not trying, you know? Like, it's, it was a really, really intense game. That was the average for the game, 185 and 181. And that's really indicating that, that the effort's there and the boys are trying. So I wasn't too fussed about this loss, really. In the end, Geelong got the last run of momentum and kicked three goals and uh, won, won the game by 28 points. Our pressure was, was good. Our execution was poor. Execution being poor could have been because of the amount of high pressure that we were dealing with, a bit higher than in previous games as well. You know, in that in that 
last quarter we kicked two goals three and they kicked four goals seven so they had a lot of opportunities a lot of ball in that last quarter it could have been worse for for us and we also could have made some opportunities so I'm not too fussed about it kind of expected going into this year that would lose four to six games I just didn't know which ones they would be so I'm expecting to cop another two losses in the out of the last six and I just can't pick which ones they'll be maybe it'll be Freo maybe it'll be Collingwood maybe Carlton maybe we'll win them all just talking about some of these uh, chances we had towards the end here I felt like Bailey Fritch made some really bad decisions throughout the game he's a little bit goal hungry which I don't mind but it makes it a lot easier when he's kicking them I noticed he had a trainer to him a lot of the night so maybe he's a little bit injured maybe he's got some some niggles but he he went long to Gorn in a 2v1 situation when Petrarca was um, open and alone yeah outside the outside the first quarter our our inside 50 entries were just really really poor they just weren't um, weren't well thought out we didn't see the lowering of the eyes that we saw against Adelaide we saw a little bit in the first quarter and then it just I guess the high pressure forced us to forget anyway let's get into some player stats Stephen May had a really really high meters gained and I think that's from taking out 19 kick-ins maybe about 19 kick-ins which is uh, quite a lot jack viney another great game here along with christian petrarca clayton oliver ed langdon gave it a good crack played 100 percent game time as well along with stephen may angus brachel good solid game james jordan and tom sparrow had some really nice moments i thought 1950s from jack viney seven score involvements from clayton oliver very low in center clearances two from harms two from oliver harms had some really good moments i mentioned last week that he's been improving in really small increments but he's getting better and better clayton oliver 23 contested possessions harrison petty beautiful game uh 90 percent disposal efficiency from his 10 disposals which is really nice luke jackson yeah only the 10 but they all happened in the first half jake lever solid game 11 intercepts five of them being intercept marks angus brayshaw 10 intercepts two being intercept marks but not quite at our normal intercept sort of game Ben Brown with two contested marks for the game. So our marking game was completely taken from us. Geelong controlled a lot of the ball, 380 disposals to 348. 244 kicks to 190, so they kicked above their average, and we kicked well below it. Handballs, we pretty much hit our average, but yeah, you can see that they didn't handball as much as we did. Geelong averaged 58 inside 50s, we averaged 57. Look at that, 46 for the match. That's a solid 11 under what we usually do. 11 more opportunities inside 50 if we had gotten what we usually average that might change the game disposal efficiency was poor ish by both sides um, could have been up a little bit more our efficiency inside 50 was also poor uh, six percent below below standard i thought the umpiring was okay a few howlers here and there for both sides um, but yeah definitely didn't have an influence on the results geelong were just the better team on the day and you can wear it when you know both teams are putting out great uh, decent effort we won hit outs but they just yeah weren't to advantage or our centers weren't able to do a lot for it see we got doubled out of center clearances 16 to 8 54 to 36 is that's a that's a huge margin in difference so we were sort of at our average but look at how many more they had their average is 38.1 stoppage clearances they got you know another 13 more than what they usually do and even though we were a little bit higher but yeah just lots of stoppages in this game lots of contested uh ball and the tactics they threw at us with blizz cabs and reese stanley really changed things up and then also rotating through selwood dangerfield guthrie atkins um atkins has been a great addition for their midfield feel like i'm talking too much about geelong here so let's just get into the coaches votes and the coaches votes were eight votes for cam guthrie mitch duncan patrick dangerfield two votes for christian Petrarca and tom atkins and then one vote each for clayton oliver and mark blizz calves so i think that the two coaches divided it up like this i am assuming that simon goodwin would give a sneaky couple of votes to clayton oliver and christian Petrarca. As for my votes, I gave one vote to Ben Brown. I felt like, especially early on, he was creating an option. Clunked two contested marks, which is the most out of any of our players. He was he was just looking a little better, and I feel like if he can get up the ground, that will be a huge help to us forward. But, yeah, in a day where it was hard to pick people out, I gave him the one vote. Gave two votes to James Harms. I felt like he had a pretty good game. Got the ball rolling for us uh, in a couple of moments. Uh, took the game on didn't stop trying gave him two votes gave three votes to Harrison Petty he had uh, an incredible defensive game against Jeremy Cameron one of the best forwards in the comp and he was able to beat him 
I thought about giving him more votes, but then I thought that would be very unfair to Clayton Oliver, who I gave four votes to. He was uh, got the most clearances for us in a really tough game, didn't stop trying, finished the game off with a fractured thumb, and I thought he did a great job. Gave five votes to Jack Viney. He tried to put the team on his back, um, considering we were pretty much playing two players down. Yeah, he's, he's playing one of the best seasons uh, for us that I, I can think of. Gave the six votes to Christian Petrarca. That's back-to-back, best on grounds. For the Ds, in my opinion, three goals, plenty of disposals, and being the player with, we thought he could be. And now for a very quick VFL review. We played the Cats in the VFL down at GMHBACD Alphabet Soup Stadium. Really, really a two-quarter game here. We kicked six goals, one to three in the first quarter. Didn't kick a goal at all for the next two. And then kicked another five in the last quarter to their two goals, four. So if you want to check out some replay, first quarter is great. Last quarter is great. Middle, not so much. Unless you just want to watch um, watch Geelong kick seven goals. There were some decent showings from this game here. Bailey Laurie, I'd be very surprised if he's not playing next week. I don't know who you take out for him, but he has been on fire. 30 disposals, kicked three goals, one. Just, and it was a wet game. It was super wet, and he was still hitting targets. I reckon he's a good chance to play. He was picked up with the pick straight after Jake Bowie in the 2020 draft. And just exquisite skills. Jacob Van Royen is also looking very nice. He looks like a good young forward. I'm not sure if his body is ready to take on the defenders in the AFL, but... I'd, I'm, I'm excited to see him at the level. You can just you can tell straight away where the players can play, and Jacob Van Royen can play. Kay Chandler's been absolutely turning it up in the VFL as well. He would easily be in the best 22 at any other club in the AFL. Jaden Hunt's playing all right still. Tajwa Woden got on the board and kicked a goal, 15 disposals. He is progressing nicely. So, yeah, if you want to have a look at some highlights, go through and uh, watch watch the first quarter and... Maybe some of the last. It was a little bit exciting to because um, it looked like we might not have had it. And uh, came came out with the chocolates, 11 points. So VFL team is still undefeated and on top of the ladder. Oh, so with that win, Geelong have now won seven in a row and sit on top of the ladder on percentage. We're sitting second with 133.4 with Port Adelaide this weekend. They are coming off a win. It should be pretty different to the last time we played them. I don't think we'll keep them goalless for three quarters. I think they're in a bit of a better position than what they were. They've got more personnel back, and they also play pretty well up in the Northern Territory. So I think it's going to be a bit of a slog of a game, but we should get the win. Geelong-Carlton this week, that's going to be an absolute cracker. Looking forward to watching that one. Same with Fremantle versus Sydney, also good. GWS and Brisbane, both in a world of hurt at the moment, so... um, not sure if that game will be interesting, but you would expect Brisbane to get the job done. Collingwood should get the job done against Adelaide as well. Richmond versus North Melbourne. Now, obviously, North Melbourne have sacked their coach today, David Noble. Interesting decision to do. Um, I think the most interesting decision was that they probably shouldn't have put him in as coach. He is definitely a much better director of football. He was director of football at Adelaide for their rebuild, and they were able to get a, get the club up to a grand final after he was involved. And then he went to Brisbane and helped them go from bottom of the ladder to top of the ladder. So David Noble definitely knows what he's doing. But I think he's a little emotional to be a game day coach. And that's where the sprays happen because he can't control his emotions. And he's a bit older. He's a bit old school with the way he goes about it. And that just doesn't fly. And it fractured the group this year. Interesting from North Melbourne that it sort of seems like their board of directors, um, their president, all that sort of stuff, are more interested in saving their own jobs rather than saving their club. Because a lot of them haven't been at football clubs before. Like, And I understand I haven't been at a football club. I probably don't know what, it would, what, it would, what to do either. But the only person that knew what to do there was David Noble. I just think he was in the wrong position. They're going to need a really experienced coach to come in to to really hold the fort. I don't think this is their Mark Neal moment. I actually think this is maybe more their Dean Bailey moment. So they might have to go through another coach and burn it. They definitely need someone experienced. I don't think Clarkson will go there. I'm not sure if Ross Lyon would be interested. Justin Lepich, maybe, but he's probably pretty happy at Collingwood with the way that they're going. St Kilda and the Western Bulldogs are here to continue to battle for probably ninth or 10th. Gold Coast 
still a sneaky chance after beating Richmond on the weekend. Richmond have got a lot of injuries, so they're very much interesting to watch. I would say these four these four clubs are all battling for this eighth spot here. And uh, look, Richmond do have an easiest run, but no Martin, no Cochin, no Tom Lynch. Soldo's injured. They've got a handful more. I'm not sure whether Presti is coming back straight away or not, but he's a huge difference to their midfield, along with Dusty and Cochin, of course. But, you know, Cochin's at the at the older end. And then, um, yeah, pretty much under that, everything else is irrelevant. So some cracking games this weekend. You'd say Bulldogs have to beat St Kilda to, to, to challenge them, but anyone down this end, I don't think they're really... I don't think they're really impacting finals. I think it's this end that's going to be impacting it. So, yeah, these teams can win it. Top six can possibly win it. Um, Brisbane looking a bit weak. I think it really comes down to the top three. And maybe we are going at 50, 60, 70% or something like that, and we're just going to have hit finals and go up to that extra level. So let's wait and see. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, it has been Year of the Days. It's just so special for such our club. Our club, mate. Our club. Lastly, after 57 years of pain, it's coming home.